It's two of the future at quarterback for Miami. You can't say that right now. No, he's not right now. You cannot say that unequivocally. And I hate saying that, Molly. I've, I've, I'm such a fan of Tua. On and off the field, you guys know I have championed Tua. As well as I have. I mean, there's some people, actually, they were in the comments in, in my last video, who said I had turned my back on Tua, which is furthest from the truth. Furthest, if that's a word. I have not at all turned my back on Tua. I've spent the last six, seven months being so far behind Tua and pushing him that I've been called all kinds of names. I haven't turned my back on Tua. If anything, what you're seeing is realism injecting into how I feel about Tua. And it's not so much about Tua, it's about the business of football. There's a big difference there. I, I, I've been a strong advocate for Tua. I'm still behind him. I'm, I'm just overemphasizing this now because I'm tired of people saying I turned my back on him because I talk fact. But that being said, and the same thing Dan Orlovsky is gonna say, but you have to understand what's going on. So let, let's continue with what he says here. But Absolutely. it's unfair to sit here and say that he's their guy. It's the reality of, man, two documented concussions over a month, and everyone assumes that there's that third one. And to me, that's the problem. There is, Dan was being truthful there and saying everybody assumes there's, a thir there's been a third concussion. They're counting the Buffalo injury as a concussion. None of them, again, none of them, have seen any charts, any examinations, any blood tests. None of them have seen anything regarding the medical examination of Tua after the Buffalo game. All they did is see him stumble and boom, that's all it took. And, and as I played yesterday in my video, some people think he's had four concussions and, and quote, I don't care what you have to say. I know what I saw. That, and that's that's where the media is at this point. And if you're an organization sitting there going, it, it's it's unfair to sit there and say, well, that's our guy because of those injuries. And that's the only reason, though. That's the only reason you sit there and have that conversation about Tua. Because the reality is, when Tua is on the field, and it's important to point this out to people, right? When Tua is on the field this year, that's the best offense in the NFL. And I think we can all agree with that. I don't think there's anybody, you know, of course, there's going to be somebody at ESPN that would disagree with it, but Dan is speaking fact. Even missing three, four games to his numbers are still up there. He ranks first in so many of these different numbers. And, and the team showed such, such promise in terms of being able to take just about anybody and go toe to toe with them, even with the two games with with Buffalo and winning one, and then you know basically almost tying on the second, and then we were ready for the thrill in Manila, the third, the trilogy, the the, the big finale, and, and somehow it got ripped out from underneath us, and we're not allowed to see what should have been the classic third game in this series, and no one seems to understand why, I, and I I don't get it myself. It's the best offense in the NFL in yards per play. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, they're second. Josh Allen and the Bills, they're third. Tua led the NFL when he played. He led the NFL in yards per attempt, yards per completion, touchdown percentage, passer rating. So you sit there and go, we found our guy. Like, this this is our guy. We, we got the quarterback to go head-to-head -head with Burrow and Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. But because of the injuries that have transpired over the course of these two or three months in this season, there's no way as an organization that you can unequivocally go into next year and go, we're good. Therein lies the problem with the fan and the realist. Therein lies the problem with somebody who's just he headstrong and doesn't want to hear it. As an organization, as a football organization, as a football business, as a billion dollar franchise, employing hundreds of people if not thousands of people down at the hard rock with the football team the, the the supporting industries of restaurants and parking attendants and you name it the police that have to come and do extra duty there is no way 
no possible way, and this is something that's very hard to swallow, there is no way that this team can go through what they went through this year again next year. It just can't happen. As many people say, Tua, we got to stand behind Tua, you, you have to get it out of your head. There's no way. I know, I know it sounds offensive and some people get ticked off. We got to stand behind Tua. Well, you're not the right in the checks for billions of dollars. You're, and I know that's not each year, but you're, you're not the one writing the checks. After all, this is a business. It is a business. You have to understand that. Television, sponsors, advertisers, all that money. And it's all about money. Don't, don't ever forget everything you see from training camp to Super Bowl is all about money. They've even monetized the combine. They monetized the draft. It's all about money. This year, we saw the, the Miami Dolphins come to a screeching halt on December 25th, Christmas. Our Christmas present was watching this team hit the bricks. And that was it. it, it it's over. Hopefully, maybe, again, if the stars align and we do something on Sunday, great. I'm all for it. But as a business person, I'm sitting up in the office with Stephen Ross and Chris Greer going, there ain't no, no way in hell we're going through this again next year. Yeah, we just can't do it. Right now, you have to admit as a fan, trust is out the window in regards to Tua Tungavailoa playing for the Miami Dolphins. I don't know how you fix that. You can't ignore Tom Brady and Lamar Jackson and whoever else, Jimmy G. You can't ignore that and go, you know what? We're good. We, we got our guy. You have no insurance policy. How many of you guys are driving around without an insurance policy? How many of you guys are married and kids and don't have a life insurance policy? You just taking it as it is? Or are you gonna do something about it? That's the position the Dolphins are in. They spent a gazillion dollars bringing in Tyreek, Teron Armstead, giving uh, X-Man a big contract. And now you sit back and go, you want to make Tua the focus for this team solely next year? Teddy Bridgewater, uh-uh. Skyler, he ain't ready. Who are you going to have to make sure, not maybe if and buts, who are you going to have to make sure this shit doesn't happen again? That's where I, I just wanted a lot of fans I talked to on Twitter who don't even want to have this discussion. As a billion dollar business, you cannot go into 2023 with a hope and a prayer. You gotta have a solid plan in case Tua doesn't make it. And I said this on NFL Live yesterday. I'll be interested to see if the Dolphins, because it's hard to turn away from them also. Like, it's hard to turn away from a guy and just say, We're, you're not in our plans at all because of all the things I just rattled off. And I'll be interested if the Dolphins sit there and go, this kid's really good. Like, he's a really, really good player, and I know we have the injury. How do we protect ourselves? And maybe it's, maybe go get Jimmy Garoppolo. And then you feel good. Now, they both have injury history, but at least you feel good about having two guys that are starting quarterbacks and you can win a ton of games with. But, but you, you can't sit there and say he's your unquestioned starter for the future. Notice what he said there. And that was a really big tell. I don't know if you guys play poker. What a tell is you say something, you use a word or you look a certain way, and it tells what you're really thinking. He said, go out and get another starting quarterback. Did you catch that? He didn't say go get a capable backup. He didn't say sign a veteran to hold the clipboard. Get another starting quarterback. Have two. Have two for two. Two quarterbacks that are capable of running this team. Not A and B, A and A. Everybody knows that Tua is, is just a pistol back there. The Samoan sniper. He can get it done when he's healthy. If he's not healthy, team falls apart. So you need, a, you need a starter. You don't want a backup. You don't want a Teddy Bridgewater. You want another starter. You see where I'm going here? My insurance policy isn't a, one of those funky looking spares that you can only drive 20 miles on. 
My, my insurance policy is I want a full treaded tire ready to go. And that treaded tire in the trunk might be Tua. I may have a different person starting. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have dual starting quarterbacks. And, and they're gonna play and they're gonna take this team where they need to go to. If one guy goes down, I know I've got a capable one coming right back in because he's another starter. He's not a backup. Those words were very, very important. That's why I cut that piece right there. You got to bring in another starter. Things are going. People are starting to look to, at the, look at things in this way. I don't think our fan base wants to even approach that. They don't even want to get to that point where they're talking about another starter. Tua is great. I, I am fully behind him when he's on the field. I also think there's the question of where does Tua where does he sit with his own type of desire to keep playing? Because he hasn't spoken about that. And that's a very real conversation that he's going to have to have. That was 100% fact. Doesn't matter if you listen to Stephen A or not. It's uh, completely abnormal that Tua has not spoken to his fans, the press, and said, here's what's going on. I said it in a video the other day. It is not against concussion protocol to speak to the press. It's not. It's, it's just that's a fallacy that's out there. And Dan Orlovsky, he would know as well, being a former NFL player, he's looking for, hey, say something. Say something. Here's a quarterback that wasn't in a concussion protocol, but yet he was able to still thank his supporters. Thank you, thank you everyone for your support and concerns regarding my injuries. I want to give you all an update as I am in a recovery process. I've suffered a PCL grade two sprain on the borderline of a strain three. There is still information inflammation surrounding my knee. And he goes on to say, and my knee remains unstable. I'm still in good spirits as I continue with treatments on the road to recovery. I wish I could be out there with my guys more than anything, but I can't give 100% of myself to my guys and fans. I'm still hopeful we still have a chance to win heart, 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 love. This is by Lamar Jackson. Tua could copy this tweet. He, there is nothing preventing him from copying this tweet and saying, from his perspective and his profile, thanks everyone for your support and concerns regarding my injuries. I want to give you all an update as I am in the recovery and the concussion protocol. I've suffered a blank grade concussion. Borderline on blank. There's still information, inflammation and swelling in my brain. How easy would that be for him to do it? As I, you know, as I've been in marketing, and there's a stat that says that 92% of adults are never more than 24 inches away from their phone. Some of us even walk around and have two phones because of the different businesses that we run. Some may have three. It would take nothing to go on to Twitter and even just copy that. Hey, everybody, tough game coming up this weekend. I know you guys have been giving me support. I feel it. Thank you for the prayers and thoughts about my injuries. I suffered a grade two concussion, grade three concussion. I still have inflammation in my brain. I'm hoping to get back if we make it to the next game. I'll be here next season. Love to it. You can't tell me. Nobody can tell me that you can't do that. There's, 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 there's no excuse. Again, things don't make sense. And then when things don't make sense, it causes people to go, what What the hell's going on? And I, again, I think that it's all fair points. If you're the Dolphins and you sit there and go, because the Dolphins, I think, would be a Super Bowl contending team as well. Certainly AFC, AFC championship contending football team. The thing that is also part of this conversation that throws a little wrinkle into this, Stephen A, is remember, next year they had two first-round picks because of the trades that were made a couple years ago. They traded one of those first-round picks to the Denver Broncos for Bradley Chubb because they believed that this was a Super Bowl contending, we can go on a run team. So for a team that sits there and is very good talent-wise and now has questions at the quarterback spot, 
they don't have as much ammunition for next year to answer a question at the quarterback position if they sit there and go, you know what, as much as we think of Tua, we can't sit kind of back and think that he's unquestionably going to be healthy for next year. Nope. Can't do it. Can't wait. With, with, there's no way. And here's another thing about the business of football. There is no way that Tyreek, Waddle, Teron Armstead, and some of these other guys are going to hang out and wait for you to develop Skylar Thompson or to develop some other quarterback. That ain't happening. The time is right now. The time. I don't think you guys understand that. The time is right now. There's an expiration date on the talent that the Miami Dolphins have. They don't have the luxury of, let's see if we can develop Skyler. And let's bring in, I don't know, this guy from this team. He's cheap, and we'll see if we can get him into our system. Nope, ain't going to happen. You need a guy right now. You need a free agent. You can't even, don't even look at Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is slated to make 50 or $60 million next year. Even if he wants out, you're going to have to eat a whole lot of money if you go after somebody like Aaron Rodgers. Don't even look at Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson turned down 200 plus million dollars with the Baltimore Ravens. Turned it down. They're going to franchise tag him anyway. He ain't going anywhere. They're going to hit the franchise tag with him and say, get your behind in, into camp. We'll talk and we'll figure it out. Tua, your, your huge contract extension is gone. That ain't happening. So now you're looking at what other free agent is going to be out there that you can possibly get to come take the helm of this team and possibly get to a Super Bowl. You, when I'm giving you this information, you can go verify it. You know what the salary cap is. You can look it up. You can. You know there's no draft picks. You know that all the quarterbacks that are pissed off, like Derek Carr and Jimmy G and Lauren, Lamar Jackson, you know what the price tags and stuff for them, and what it's going to take to get them. We have to build this team and through free agency. And there's really only one answer. And so everyone who says, no way, we can't do that. There is one answer. One answer. And I'm going to talk about that on Monday or Tuesday. But take a big chill pill and understand that even if Skyler wins this game and we somehow pull it out, he is not going to be QB1 next year. Not going to happen. Even if Tua comes back next year, he's going to be QB one and a half. You can't go through this again next year. It just can't happen. I don't think Tua's played a full football season in like five years. I don't believe. I, I don't think he played a full season his sophomore year. I don't think he played a full season his junior year. And now I don't think he's ever played a full NFL season. And and. Those are facts over feelings because I love the player. I love them. But that's a very difficult situation for a, a, an organization to be in. Extremely difficult situation for any organization to be in, not just the Miami Dolphins. So free agency is the only way we're going to fix this problem. I know it. Not an opinion. I'm sure Mike McDaniel knows it. I'm pretty sure Chris Greer knows it. And I know Stephen Ross knows it. It's just the fans who are being slow to it and understanding that as great a guy as he is, as much as we love him, as much as we support him and get behind him, you're not being logical in terms of thinking things as a business, whether or not Tua is going to be the standalone QB1 for next year. Who knows? That one guy may say, eh, I'm not interested. And then we've got to roll the dice with Tua by himself. Is anybody catching on to this Barry guy? <laughs>